you're watching Gears. Brought to you by Holly Performance Products. Fuel your passion. And Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. Hey, welcome to Gears. You know, one of the cool things about this particular show is that we get to work on all kinds of cool gearhead stuff. But before I did this show, I did a show called Trucks. And about 20 years ago, I started a buildup on a 67 Chevy truck. Now the concept was to start with a frame and a cab and then build a truck that had the look and the pizzazz of a show truck that had the reliability of a daily driver and had the incredible performance of a true hot rod all on a budget that the average gearhead could afford. Yeah, that's a tough criteria to hit. But it's because of that criteria that I named the project Copperhead because I wanted it to be like the snake, you know, that lays there in the leaves, it's all camouflage, and you have no idea how lethal it is until that thing hits you. Yeah. Well, the project obviously was incredibly popular, especially among people that wanted to build a similar vehicle. And Copperhead became one of the most popular things I did on the show trucks. But then, of course, I changed shows, started building new vehicles, Copperhead went on to a new owner, and that usually is the final chapter to a custom vehicle. However, the seeds planted by the Copperhead project continued to grow and produce new gearheads and spawn new products for the aftermarket as the popularity of these triple threat style trucks continued to explode. So much so that the Grand National Roadster Show one of the most prestigious car shows in the nation decided to have a special keep on trucking exhibit in 2023. And they asked to have Copperhead there as one of the top 10 most influential trucks of all time. Now, obviously, it is a tremendous honor to be included in something like that. But for those of you that may not remember this project, or maybe you're seeing it for the first time, you may be looking at this going, so what was so influential about this truck? I mean, it looks like a burnt orange truck that you'd see at any cruise in across the nation. And that is a great compliment about what this truck was supposed to be. It's also a great question. So we're gonna dig into this thing and show you how this truck helped lay the groundwork of what we now know as the Resto Mod. The first thing that really made the Copperhead project unique was that I started with just a frame and a cab. Now that's pretty common by today's standards with reproduction bodies and parts everywhere. Freedom! Freedom! But reproduction parts were just starting to hit the market back then. And they were mostly for street rods and muscle cars, not trucks. Matter of fact, most people would stay away from a truck project because the beds were always beat up and there were no reproduction panels available anywhere. Well, Copperhead changed all that by showcasing the first fully reproduction bed for the 67 through 72 Chevy trucks. Now, everything is reproduction here. The bed sides, the tailgate, the head gate, the inner fenders, the cross members, the hardware, all of it. And when people saw how good it looked and how well it fit and that you could get it from LMC truck as opposed to going to a GM dealership, man, people went crazy. And that opened the door for all of the reproduction bodies and parts that we see today. Now, when it came to body modifications, I wanted to keep them pretty simple because the 67 through 72 GM trucks have just a great design, but they can be cleaned up a little bit. So, the drip rail was shaved off around the doors and the windshield, and the rear seam line was welded up as well. The stake pocket holes, the gas filler neck were also welded up to smooth out the cab and the bedsides. 
Now these are all modifications that are common in the street rod and custom world, but not on trucks at the time. But these subtle modifications make such a difference in the overall look that it began to encourage people to consider building a truck as a custom or a hot rod instead of just a cargo hauler. In a world of economic uncertainty, there will always be a need for quality tools and people who can use them. That's why becoming a Cornwell tool dealer is one of the best career moves you can make. With routes available all across the nation, it's a great way to be your own boss, supply high quality tools to professionals, and make some real money. If you're tired of working for someone else, have the drive to succeed, and want a career that can be successful no matter what happens on Wall Street, there's a Cornwell tool truck with your name on the side. Metal, it's one of the key components of what we build and fabricate with. But if you can't shape it and cut it, you can't build with it. For over 50 years, Woodward Fab has been supplying the tools and technical advice to get the job done right. Bead rollers, brakes, shears, tubing benders. You'll find what you need whether you're a professional metal worker or just starting out. Woodward Fab, shaping metal since 1966. Hey, welcome back to Gears and our look at Copperhead. <laughs> yeah, that old burnt orange Chevy truck that I built so many years ago. And it ended up inspiring a whole generation of gearheads to get out and build something in their garage. Now, what we're doing now is going through all the unique features of this project to show you why it was so influential back then and show you what's changed, what stayed the same, and what's gotten even better. And the purpose, just like it was 20 years ago, is to hopefully encourage you to get out there and build something like this in your own garage. Now we've looked at the cab, the bed, now let's take a look at the front. The front sheet metal is just like the bed, in that I used a reproduction hood front fenders, inner fenders, and all the lights and trim and bumpers are reproduction as well. And some of those early reproduction parts, <laughs> they didn't fit too well. So there's a lot of hours of fitting and massaging and tweaking to make this thing look as good as it does. But keep in mind, this was never meant to be a full-on show vehicle. No, this is a multi-purpose vehicle. It had to look good enough to roll into a local show. It had to be reliable enough to drive every day. And it had to go like stink when we hit the pedal. And on a vehicle like that, it doesn't matter if some of the gaps aren't exactly perfect. Fortunately for us today, a lot of these reproduction parts fit way better than they did back then. So that's going to save us time and money on a project today. Now, the grill, that's an original piece because nobody was reproducing the 6768 grill at the time. Now, there's several companies that make them, but not back then. Back then, <laughs> they were hard to find in good shape. Now, as far as customizing on the front, I kept that to a minimum as well with just a couple of glaring things that I thought needed to be fixed. One was to lose the Chevrolet letters across the front of the hood, and the other was to lose that bow tie in the middle of the grill. Now, the main reason for this was because they both really mess up what is a nice line across the front. And if you don't know this truck is a Chevrolet, just by looking at the body, well, those letters in that bow tie aren't gonna help you. Now, the interior is where you see some influence from the street rod world. The dash featured a polished aluminum door for the glove box and a matching aluminum bezel that allowed you to mount aftermarket gauges in the dash. Now, both of these were just hitting the market from No Limit Engineering when I got them. Fortunately, they're still available today. Eliminating the vent windows and converting to one-piece glass was a relatively new modification at the time. 
but one that really cleans up the cab of the 6772 C10 truck, especially if you shave the drip rails. Inside, the seats, the door panels, and the console were all custom made and upholstered, which of course is expensive and time consuming. But since I used aftermarket seats from Steel Horse, this project showed that there was a need for custom aftermarket interior panels and seats for trucks. Unfortunately, Steel Horse is no longer in business, but this paved the way for the custom aftermarket seats and panels that you can now buy from places like TMI or LMC. However, there were still plenty of one-off custom touches inside. For example, nitrous was a big deal at the time with the Fast and Furious crowd. So we hit a nitrous bottle and gauges in the console, as well as a dual exhaust cutout for when I wanted to let the world hear this thing roar. A successful automotive project takes planning and organization. But instead of using an old tablet or notebook, there's the Gears Deluxe Project Planning Book. This was designed to help you lay out a project, the parts, the tools, costs, and keep it organized with colored tabs, a pouch for receipts, and even a place to attach photos. If you decide to sell the vehicle, it serves as a complete history of what's been done. If you have a project or plan on starting one, the Gears Project Planning Book is the best way to lay it out and make it happen. Hey, we're back and about to dig into one of the most unique aspects of the Copperhead project. Now, contrary to what a lot of you may think, it was not the custom SG guitars that the Gibson Custom Shop did, although these were really cool. No, the most unique aspect of Copperhead was the drivetrain. Take a look. Remember, I designed the truck to be strong in three areas. Look good, handle well, and go like stink when you stomp the pedal. And that go was provided by a secret engine. The Chevy was developing to kick everybody's butt. And I was the first one to get my hands on one. Now, what we have here is the very first 572 crate engine that Chevrolet let out the door. Now, this is a pre-production engine, so it was so top secret that a lot of people that worked at GM didn't even know this thing existed. And when the show hit the air, it caught everybody by surprise. I mean, the response was so great that it shut down the phone lines at GM every time the show aired. I had friends calling me that worked at GM and they were like, man, what did you do? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, I'm just building a truck. Nobody saw it coming. Just like when you get hit by a copperhead. <laughs> the best part is, that engine gave a message loud and clear to the aftermarket that people wanted to go fast again. The release of a 640 horsepower crate engine ignited a horsepower war that led not only to the retro styled Mustangs and Camaros, Challengers that we have today, but also the incredible thousand horsepower crate engines that you can stuff in your projects now. Now backing up that massive engine was a turbo 400 transmission and a gear vendors overdrive, all running through a Dana 60 rear end. The result, excessive tire smoke and the longest recorded black marks at the time, as well as the very first donuts done on an automotive TV show. <laughs> 
Now, back when I built Copperhead, there were no custom frames available for trucks. Now, the street rod world had them, and there were guys like Art Morrison and Chris Alston that were starting to build them for muscle cars. But if you wanted to upgrade the suspension on a truck, well, this stuff was all pretty much bolt-on. So, that's what we did. Starting with a solid powder-coated frame, we put on all new A-arms, bushings, ball joints, and steering components, and then lowered the stance two inches with drop spindles and one inch drop springs and a heavy duty sway bar and of course gas shocks. And all of these parts are still available from LMC today. This combination along with the quick ratio gearbox gets the nose down where it should be and makes the truck handle more like a performance car than an old truck. For the rear, we kept the trailing arm suspension, but upgraded to welded arms for strength and then lowered it all with four inch drop springs and gas shocks. Now in the back, a super track bar kit controls any side to side movement and all that power is channeled through a massive Dana 60 rear end with a true track posi. Now this combination drops the rear end down to the proper hot rod rake and provides great handling and tremendous strength without spending a fortune or C-notch in the frame. Now, when it comes to brakes, I knew it was important to have something that could bring this baby to a stop quick. So, I used an electric hydraulic master cylinder with bare errata speed discs to do the job. Big brakes were just starting to become a thing, and this was one of the first sets that Bear put together for the truck market. Another thing that was just starting to hit the custom market was the bigger wheel look and people were slapping 20s on everything. But it was important that I didn't go too big on Copperhead because I wanted to keep that classic look. So I went with these 17 inch Colorado custom wheels for a more modern take on the classic five spoke design. This allowed me to use tires that had plenty of sidewall for creating ample amounts of tire smoke. And that's Copperhead, then and now. Man, it is hard to believe it's been almost 20 years since I built this thing. And the biggest question that I get now about it is people wonder, would you change anything or would you do it exactly the same way? And the answer is no, I would not change anything because I built this thing exactly how I wanted to. And it still looks good when you drive it down the road or take it to a car show. It still handles well enough to drive it every day or take it around cones if you want to. And it still goes like stink when you hit the pedal. In other words, this thing is fun. Why in the world would I change anything? Redesigned from the ground up, MSD's Ultra 6A boasts a significant size reduction, making it 60% smaller, 50% lighter, and 35% more efficient. Find out about MSD's latest products at holly.com. And now, Parts Bin. If you drive a truck or an SUV, you know it's important to find the right tire for the way that you're going to drive the vehicle. And if you're into hardcore off-roading, the Interco IROC is the tire you need to take a look at. Developed by Interco over many years of off-road research and development, the IROC features unique scooped lugs and siping for traction and serious digging power when you need it. The directional pattern features their three-stage lug design and the lugs extend all the way out down the sides for even more traction. The tire body features cut resistant compounds, making these extremely hard to puncture and the perfect tire for snow, mud, or rocks. Now, obviously the IROC is designed for superior traction off-road, but because of the lug design, these are not overly loud on the highway, meaning that you can use them on a daily driver if you want. 
They also have them from 15 inch rim all the way up to 22 inch rim. So they're probably going to have a fitment for whatever you're running. If you're looking for a great all around tire with an emphasis on traction, the IROC is something you need to check out. And now, what are you working on? Today's What Are You Working On comes from Lucas, and he's right down the road in Tennessee, and he has a 1955 Ford F100. Now, he said when he found this truck, it was in a salvage yard. You can see it was pretty rough. And uh, he said it was going to be crushed. So he and his wife decided that they just wanted to turn it into yard art. So they worked the deal out with the guy, paid 1200 bucks for it. It gives you an idea what these old trucks go for, even for yard art. And he drug it home. But somewhere along the line, he decided, you know, I'd rather drive this thing than pull it around his yard art. So he started working on it. Now he said, this thing was so rough. Check this out. It was just gone. So he decided to do just a whole body swap on it. And he found a 98 Ford Ranger that he was just going to put the cab down on. So cut the old Ranger body off, took the bodies off, swapped them, built his own body mounts, built his own bed mounts, got it all looking good. And the more he worked on it, he said the better looking it got. So he decided, you know, I'm going to go ahead and fix the metals. <laughs> he started fixing the metal. And then once he had that looking good, he put the dash of the Ranger in it. Check it out. And it looks really good. So now he's got the, the truck running. He's actually has driven this truck to several states and he just enjoys it, but still has a lot more to do. Of course he does. And then he says he plans on going full air ride, uh, adding some of the original logos that were on the side because it was a termite truck. Perfect for an old rusty truck. He said, it's a running driving truck. It has air, it has heat, it has power glass. It's got all the modern stuff that you'd want. I get 15 miles to the gallon while enjoying a 55 Ford F100. Can't say it any better than that, Lucas. What an awesome project. And I'm glad your wife's involved with it too. So we are gonna hook you up with one of our deluxe project planning books because you're gonna need this to keep track of everything that you've done on that project. Now, obviously, you're a real gearhead, so we're going to give you a Gears t-shirt, and then we're going to give you a gift card from Holly as well, so you can get some parts from Holly, because I know you're going to need them on that truck. Then we're going to finish it off with a stunt double die cast, because <laughs> you're from Tennessee, man. Everybody's got to do a little wheeling in Tennessee from time to time. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this and get your project featured on the show, you got to send it to us. Go to our website, go to Gears Nation, and submit it into What Are You Working On? The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise, and how to join Gears Nation. You can also see Gears episodes for free on our YouTube channel and become a channel member. That way you get bonus content, and you get early access to all the new episodes. Also, don't forget to check us out on Amazon Prime for Gears and the Gears Restoration Series. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're a radio person, make sure you check out our podcast, Tales of a Gearhead. All right, that wraps it up for us today, which means that it's time for you to get out there, start turning some wrenches, and start working on something. If you don't, you have no idea what you might be missing out on. We'll see you next time.